Hello and welcome to the News 9 Plus show on the world's first news and current affairs OTT platform, News 9 Plus. Iran has raised a red flag of revenge. Reports suggest that this red flag is rarely raised outside of the Mohram festival. In fact, the last time it was raised was after the killing of IRGC commander Qasim Soleimani in 2020. Iran has raised this flag again on Wednesday after the killing of Ismail Haniye in Iran. Supreme Leader Khamenei has ordered Iran to strike Israel directly. How will Iran retaliate and what does this mean for West Asia? The first option, will Iran carry out a large-scale combined missile and drone attack like it did in April? Will Iran use its proxies, the Hezbollah and the Houthis? Will they attack Israeli ports and infrastructure and trade routes? Will they carry out cyber attacks? Or will Iran go in for a direct attack on Israel as well as simultaneous strikes by its so-called axis of resistance factions? To talk about this, I have with me Itai Melchior, who joins us from Haifa. Major General Sanjay Meston in the studio with me is my colleague Aditya Rajkol. Gentlemen, welcome to the News 9 Plus show. So I'm, I'm going to ask uh, my... Uh, both my guests, the top options that Iran has uh, for retaliation, what can Iran do to retaliate for this attack as a face saver, keeping all of these below the threshold, below the fact that of a wider conflict, which they clearly don't want at this moment? I think, Sandeep, your question itself has uh, highlighted uh, keywords below the threshold level and uh, what you can do. Uh, see, uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, you also mentioned face saving. Exactly, this is what the whole problem with Iran is. It is face saving, and especially yes. the public. Because tomorrow also, uh, I also feel uh, you know one of the consequences of this would be lack of the public sentiments or uh, lack of uh, you know faith in the leadership of uh, Iran, and therefore there could be public resentment. Even if they launch a so-called uh, April kind of attack, there's going to be a lot of public resentment. And we should not be surprised that there uh, could be a lot of protest in uh, Iran itself. And as it is, they have got large number of uh, human rights issues. So that could also spell down, uh, spell bound into all these kind of things. So that's going to be some internal problems may happen. But anyway, to bow down to the public pressure, they are going to do a symbolic attack, exactly something, a repeat of April. But if they do a miscalculation of hitting targets, and if Israeli domes, uh, are not very effective and if there is substantial casualties then I think the war dimension will change otherwise the threshold level uh, they will try to keep it below threshold level they will launch huge number of uh, missiles and drones and uh, perhaps uh, uh, some of them may be even uh, you know so bad that uh, they could be technically flawed missiles uh, in the army we call them a dud missiles they may not even explode they may land somewhere or even uh, some of them uh, may land in the Mediterranean or uh, you know in the Dead Sea area. So anything is a possibility. But I think uh, you have a pertinent point. They would like to keep it below the threshold uh, level because if it, uh, if uh, they also realize the consequences, the consequences are going to be grave for Israel and thereafter it is no holds, no bar for uh, Israel. They will, I think, sort out all their top military and political leadership, including Khomeini. And now they are aware, uh, I think they would have sleepless nights that when is the next missile going to target them. So keeping this in mind, uh, I think Iran very well knows, uh, and especially with the U.S. Uh, fleet presence in Mediterranean and uh, you know Indian Ocean, etc., I think uh, they will be uh, doing this attack, some kind of attack which would be below the threshold level, and just to show to the world and publicize, yes, we have kept our uh, identity and integrity and you know sovereignty, and we have attacked and we have got the right to attack. Exactly the way uh, Israel, uh, Iran and Pakistan did recently, exchange of missiles, they also did and they also did and that's it. So I think it will be something on that level. Otherwise, I've already explained the consequences and then they will suffer in the end. Right. The Itai, uh, do you believe that uh, Iran's retaliation will be on the lines of what happened in April this year? Could you just outline the possible options they have before them at this moment? Yeah, so... so um, as, as the general said, um, we are likely to see the same kind of attack. The question will be the scope, because that attack actually had a, a quite a big scope and yet was totally unsuccessful besides uh, injuring 
uh, a Bedouin girl down south. Uh, and so, so it's a bit tricky to do the same thing again when you know what the outcome will be. Uh, there have been talks about a, a kind of an attack from Syrian territory that Houthi militias are getting ready in Syria to attack because it seems like Hezbollah is not really wi willing to do a ground invasion from the north. So that's also a slight possibility. Um, so therefore, I, I really believe that we're going to see something similar, a combined uh, attack um, from, from Iraq, Syria, Iran, Yemen, uh, maybe also uh, Lebanon. Uh, but the problem was that last time this actually brought together the Abraham Accord allies and we saw many regional countries and European countries participate in thwarting that attack and that is something that actually doesn't serve Iran's interests. So therefore I still think that they are plotting and trying to think of a, a, a quality target uh, on foreign soil, uh, meanwhile still thinking of the same kind of attack that we saw in April. Sandeep, uh, since you asked me earlier about the bigger a, a picture, I think let's take a, a even higher bird's view, maybe a satellite view, and remember that we are three months away from elections in the US, and the outcome yes. of these elections is going to have a crucial effect on the region and on Iran. Just look at the re 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 sanctions regime on Iran uh, in the Trump administration and in the local one. Yes, uh, there's just new sanctions imposed yesterday on several entities and individuals in Iran and China related to their missile and drone program, but uh, their oil exports have grown and a big part of their income is, is from that. And there are talks, at least on the Republican side, there's even a bill proposed uh, by uh, Senator Graham uh, that will impose, impose very high tariffs uh, on goods important from, imported from countries uh, who trade with Iran on oil. By the way, India is also a small trader here, but it's mainly China. Yes. Um, so these things have a big effect, and I think that the Iranians uh, do not want to blow things out right now because they don't want an international coalition against them. They don't want a strong anti-Iranian sentiment in the U.S. They don't want the oil prices to go up because that doesn't serve also the best interest of yes. a, a residing American presidents. So the big question is what is Iran going to do? And the options are a few. One is a combined attack the same way we saw a few months ago uh, in, in uh, April when they, they launched uh, hundreds and thousands of rockets and drones uh, from all fronts, from Iraq, from, uh, from Yemen, from Syria, uh, from Iran, etc. Um, another option is attacking Israeli targets in Europe. We know they've tried before in Europe or in Latin America. Um, there have been attempts also even in Indian soil in the past right. of attacks against Israeli diplomats. Yes. So that is also something uh, not to take lightly. But in the end, if you look at the bigger picture of uh, peace uh, in, in the Western uh, Middle East, as you call us, we think we are the center of course of the world. <laughs> um, but, if, but if you look at that, I, I think that in the end, we've seen clearly seen that Hezbollah is not looking for an all out war. Right. And therefore, if we only left with the exchanging attacks remotely with missiles and drones, then this is not something that will create regional instability. My index is always, and you know, I've been talked in the past, yes. uh, since I also look into e economics, first thing I look and see is what's happening to oil prices. Right. Uh, and we see that there hasn't been a major change to oil prices in the last uh, few days. Uh, so therefore, I think that the general feeling is that we are not looking at a big change in the current situation right now. You're not looking at a big change in the current situation right now. That's uh, that's a relief, uh, Aditya, because every time there's a major attack of this nature, we worry about the war spiraling out of control and more countries being pulled in. But as Itai mentions, that the fact that it seems to be something that would be localized. And this attack, this retaliation from Iran, could just be another such attack like April. Is there any apprehension whatsoever in our foreign policy establishment that there could be a wider, uh, ex, you know, the conflict could actually expand beyond the Middle East, beyond, good, you know, pull other countries in? We're fully aware of the fact that there are American aircraft carriers in the region. What's the sense? How is India's MEA looking at this situation right now? You know, firstly, I would say, Sandeep, that it's already a regional conflict. Right. It's already uh, beyond, far beyond, in fact, the Israeli territory and yes. Gaza. 
We've already seen retaliatory action by Israel in the last few days against Syria, against yes. Iraq, and other actors who are working at behest of Iran as its proxies. proxies. Yes. We have continuously seen uh, Israel reacting. We've also seen, apart from the retaliation that Israel did in Beirut, yes. uh, a very strong message from the Israeli government to Hezbollah that any kind of a retaliation from Hezbollah that actually leads to civilian casualties again will lead to a full-scale war. That kind of a warning has already gone down. Right. I would agree with Itaya and the general where they say that there won't be a major escalation mm. of the regional conflict. Again, uh, from the Indian government perspective as well, they are monitoring the situation very closely. Yes. They have very close and strategic links with a lot of countries in the Middle East, right. including that of Israel. And we have, of course, sent a lot of humanitarian uh, assistance to Palestine. Uh, and we remain in contact with uh, you know, all these uh, uh, you know, establishments. But I don't think uh, that apart from the connectivity projects and sea yes. routes being affected by Houthis and others, uh, there will be an expansion right. Right. Uh, of this conflict. But right. uh, as with any conflict or war situation, uh, Indian government is monitoring this very closely because yes. this affects not just oil prices, but connectivity uh, across this entire region. Right, absolutely. Uh, uh, thanks very much, uh, gentlemen, for this. Uh, Iran will strike. It has no option. It's a face saver for the Iranian regime to hit back at this wave of assassinations, especially this very high profile assassination of Ismail Haniyeh in the heart of Tehran. But its options, as our esteemed guests have told us, are extremely limited. It's fighting against time, it's fighting against space, and it's certainly fighting against opportunity. But thanks very much, gentlemen, for joining us this evening to talk about Iran's depleting, diminishing options in the face of Israel's resurgent attacks and assassinations against it. Thanks very much.